Hi, welcome to our new YouTube series of Golfit. We're going to be showing you how we train some of our golfers here. We're going to be taking you through the structure of our training, we're going to be taking you through how we select our exercises, how we implement those exercises, and the progress we'd expect to see from our golfers. Uh, so today I have Ollie with me, I've got Lewis and I've got Ricky, and we're going to be taking them through a needs analysis. Um, every good program needs a needs analysis. The more detailed that is, uh, the easier it is to create a good program. So, for today guys, we're going to go through um, a couple of screens. We're going to go through a movement-based screen and we're going to go through a power screen. This is really important that we get the movement-based screen first so that when we go into your power screen, we know if there's any imbalances there. We need to know that you can move through that pattern well. We're still going to do the power screen as well. The screens that we mostly use at GolfFit are the FMS screen for movement screens and TPI for movement screens are more golf specific. If you don't know them already, go and Google them. I'm not going to go through them here. That's for someone else to do. Um, so today we're going to focus mostly on the squat pattern. So we're going to do uh, arms cross squat, we're going to do an overhead squat, and then we're going to go outside and we're going to do some counter movement jumps using the squat pattern. Okay? And we're going to look at everybody's differences, how people move differently, uh, and how that's going to affect their power when they go into the jump phase. All right, good to get going. So when we're screening our athletes, there are tons of tests that we can use in the movement screens. Um, I've chosen the squat test for this video because it's in the FMS screen, it's in the TPI screen, so it covers both. Uh, first up we've got Ollie. So Ollie's going to demonstrate a couple of things here that a lot of golfers uh, who also maybe have daytime jobs will see. Uh, you can see here, maybe not as well from the front, we'll see it in the back in a second, but his hips open up towards the target because he's a right-handed golfer, or towards where his target would be in golf. In the side view you can see that the bar, which starts above his head, is going to end up in front of his toes at the bottom here. So he struggles with a little bit of extension while he flexes his hips. Um, now, if you're someone who struggles with that, you're going to struggle to maintain your posture during your swing, which is going to lead to inconsistencies. This is really obvious from the back. You can see that weight sinks down into the right foot. And he's actually got, it's not just a, a shift, it's actually a bit of rotation with Ollie. He'll turn his hips towards the left, which gives you that asymmetry look from the front. So pretty common with a right-handed golfer. They're going to open up their hips towards the target sometimes. And that's just because you're used to setting up that way the whole time. Vicky's a full-time tour player, so her, her you know, consistencies or her compensations are going to be more like a full-time golfer. Um, similar to Ollie, she does have a tendency sometimes to let her hips turn to the left because, again, she plays right-handed. Um, she's a bit more stable, a bit more mobile than Ollie. Um, the thing she struggles with the most is the traction with her feet. So sometimes she'll get her right foot spinning out a little bit in a squat. You might see in this one, see her right knee is probably not really tracking over her toes there, which encourages her foot to, to spin out. Now, you lose grip of the ground. If you're someone who tries to do a squat and your feet feel that they're spinning out or they're not really gripping the ground very well, and that's going to affect the stability in your knees and the action in your hips as well. So uh, we need to make sure you've got a good grip of the ground when you squat in order for your knees and hips to work well, especially uh, for golf, we want our hips to be really, really functional, really uh, efficient. Um, she also struggles a little bit with extension, but she's working hard on it here, so she keeps the bar in a pretty good place. Basically, as long as your shins and your spine at the bottom of your squat are parallel, then we're pretty happy. That's exactly what we want at the bottom of the squat. So don't be worried about forward lean. In the next video, you'll see that with Lewis. Um, Forward lean is okay as long as it's parallel with your shins at the bottom of the squat. So you can use a mirror to check that out if you don't have a trainer. Um, here we've got Lewis. So Lewis, again, full-time golfer, playing an amateur circuit. Uh, I should say Lewis is hypermobile, so don't expect everybody to squat this way. Um, he's a good example of the other end of the spectrum. So uh, Lewis from the front looks pretty good. Fairly neutral for a golfer. Golfers have lots of asymmetries, so you know pretty hard for them to stay neutral. He's doing really well there. Uh, he does squat well. You'll see Lucy Strunk's very upright. And if anything, he could probably do the little bit more forward lean at times. Um, and sometimes that's why you'll see his belt line here at the bottom just starts to tuck a little bit. So stability is hard for him. Um, as I say, he's hypermobile. Mobility is going to be an easy thing. Staying stable is his, uh, his key. If he can do that, then he's going to be really efficient. From the back, he, he definitely doesn't have as much asymmetry as the other two. Uh, his feet are a lot more stable than they used to be. Uh, he keeps really good extension in his upper back. Um, so yeah, if you, you want to squat well, this is a good picture. You want to do squatting as well as that, hopefully. If you can do that, 
your golf swing is going to be pretty consistent. Your posture is going to be great. Uh, okay, so on to the power screens now. So that's the exciting stuff. So I've chosen the current movement jump for this video because it directly relates to our squat test. Um, first up again, we've got Ollie. Uh, so you'll see right at the end, the last jump here, I've slowed this right down. Lots of research out there says that if you, how epic is that? <laughs> right, so if you can squat really well, so if you've got a lot of strength in your squat and a full deep squat, that's the movement that's going to help you jump height. Jump height directly relates to how far you hit the golf ball. Okay, a lot of research out there to say that as well. So in this video, or in this testing day, Ollie jumped 37 centimeters. He's not going to have as much access to energy in both legs because he's got that imbalance. Vicky's a bit better than that, so she jumped 42 centimeters. And here comes the big jump. Boom. All right, there you go. So that's 72 centimeters loose is jumping there. Or if you're an American watching this video, that's 28 inches. Okay, so that's pretty high. And that's why Lewis hits the ball the farthest out of the three of them by quite a bit. Okay, so he's uh, he's actually doing some long drive competitions just now as well. Uh, so we'll see a bit more about his power in future videos as well. Jump higher, hit the ball further. Interesting, you've seen today that everybody's power output and their jump height has uh, has been affected by their movement patterns. Okay, so we said at the start that movement is the first thing that we test and that's the most important one. Then we start to load, then we start to increase speed. But even at the start, we're still going to test the power. Uh, so we've seen when uh, Lewis jumped, we've seen how high he could jump. That was pretty impressive. Um, and then we've seen how good his movement was in the squat as well. And we've probably seen the exact opposite for Ollie. Let's leave it at that. Uh, Vicky's was kind of in the middle. She was like, you know, her movement's pretty good. There's a few little things there that can be cleaned up. And similarly in her jump, very good jump. But again, she's got a bit to gain there based on her other power scores, which we'll talk about in the future videos.